Right, so today we're going to be overseeding the lawn. Now, if I'm being really honest, the lawn looks like it's in a really good condition at the moment. If you just get down to the grass level, you can see it's quite thick. Um, it's bunched out quite well this spring already. And it's because, you know, I've been on my fertiliser, I've had liquid nitrogen on it, I've had liquid seaweed on it, and even as well some wetting agent just to make sure the water's been distributing itself well into the lawn. However, it doesn't mean the lawn isn't without its flaws at the moment. You can see we've got the odd weed knocking about, so I'm going to be pulling this one with the weed removing tool in a moment. And we do have the old patch like this as well. Now, the reason we've got patches like this is because I used a weed removing tool earlier in the season just to pull a few weeds and I never overseeded the patches because it was just far too cold to do so at the time. So these patches need to be overseeded today. And also this side as well. Now, I think the reason why this part of the garden is quite patchy is because you can see at the moment, this bit spends a lot of the day in the sun and even this part does as well later on but this part gets hardly any sun at the moment so this bit is in desperate need of an overseeding i'm not going to be using the drop spreader to put the seed on to the lawn like i did when i was doing the overseeding on the front grass and also what i've done on the back grass too and the main reason why is because there's only a few patches that do need to be overseeded. If you've got too much grass seed down in one place, the main problem you're going to have is the fact that all the grass plants are going to be fighting for the same water, for the same nutrients, and it's going to really stress out your grass. And then it's going to do the opposite effect to what you're hoping it'll do. It'll start to thin out your lawn, which is definitely not what you want to be happening at this time of year. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to cut the grass and then I'm going to identify any spots that need any overseeding. I'll rake out those spaces just to break up the soil. I'll overseed just by hand and then I'll get on with a little bit of compost just to make sure no birds take it and also to give it a little bit of nutrients as well just to make sure that it germinates really well. I'm going to be mowing on the third highest setting today and that's what I've been doing for the past few weeks just to keep this lawn looking nice and lush and nice and thick. However, if you're going to be overseeding your entire lawn and because it's you know patchy or it's in a bit of a mess, what you do want to be doing is you want to be almost not fully scalping it, but taking the grass down as low as you can without stressing it out too much. Now, I'm not going to be doing that because the whole lawn doesn't need to be overseeded. And if I just scalp it, all I'm going to do is stress the plants out. It's going to go a little bit yellow and it's going to take a little bit of time to recover then. So I'm going to stick with the usual height that I've been using and it'll hopefully identify any of the sort of the bare spots that are knocking about on the lawn. One thing I haven't mentioned recently either is how often you should be strimming your lawn. Now, I've not used a strimmer for about two weeks, maybe. You can see the difference in the length of this grass on the end compared to the grass in the middle. So I'm going to be strimming it today and then hopefully that will mean I don't need to strim for at least a couple of weeks. I'll just have to come on and cut the grass. And in case you missed my last video, I spoke about all the things you can do to thicken up your lawn. That doesn't include overseeding. So if you do want to check out that video, there will be a link somewhere in the description below. Someone commented once and said I shouldn't really strip in socks and sliders. Well, just nick my toe when I was there streaming the edge over there, and I can confirm they're there quite a bit. using this tool to pull the weed out which is the Fiskars exact it's something I picked up from home base a couple of years ago but you can get similar things in the likes of B&Q and whatnot you do want to be getting one though with the little foot pedal on because it's so much easier to actually pull the entire weed out the ground it's not guaranteed every time but it definitely helps to do the job right there you go we've got the entire weed got all of the stem uh, a tiny bit looks like it's been nicked off there so it might possibly be a little bit left in the soil which could potentially be a bit of a problem going forward but only time will tell and if it does come back we can just pull out again simple as what we've just done today now you can see that's left a bit of a hole in the soil now what i am going to do is i'm going to put topsoil inside of this hole rather than compost 
The reason being is the compost is going to break down over time. All its nutrients and things is going to disperse itself into the soil to feed the plants. But the topsoil that you do put into the hole instead is going to be there forever. So I'm just going to take a little bit of this, the Western topsoil. It's really good topsoil. I've used it to top dress and level the front garden. And I've done the same to this down here. And it was also the same topsoil I used when I leveled and seeded this lawn from scratch. So before I seed any of these patches, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a general rake just to break up this top level of soil. And the reason being is because you can see it almost adds this bit of a clay type consistency, which isn't really what you want to be having. You want to break it up so the soil is loose, so that the new seed has something to sort of hold on to. So you can just see there, I've broken up the soil so it's a little bit more crumbly rather than these patches here where you can see it is quite smooth. So I'm going to do the same thing to all the other patches and then it'll be time to get on with the seed. one lawns premiership pro grass seed again to overseed this lawn now it's the exact same bag that i seeded this lawn with originally so there should be no difference in the color of the grass once it germinates and once it matures now if you've got a big lawn it's going to take a little bit longer than obviously what it's going to take me it's going to take me only a couple of minutes to get the seed down but i'm just going on by hand because it's giving it a sprinkle and filling in all of those patches You don't want to be putting too much seed down in any one place so you can see how it's been distributed here that is plenty because each grass seed is going to become more than just a single grass blade With this being such a small space as well, I'm possibly going to be using this rake to go round to smooth out all of the compost, but I am going to be trying this one instead just to see if it gets the job done a little bit quicker. Now, the space is only small. If you're working with a space about this big or even bigger, it might be worth using the bigger rake. But if you have got a small lawn like this, a rake like this will suffice. Now, one thing that's really important when you go on with the compost is you need to make sure that you do not suffocate the grass blade. So you can dump it down onto the grass, use the back of a rake just to rake it around to get it nice and flat, but you need to make sure that you actually agitate the grass that's below because you do not want to be suffocating the grass that's there and hindering that growth whilst the new stuff is coming through. Now the reason I went over the entire lawn with the compost rather than just the patches that I overseeded is because the grass that's already established gets a lot from the actual compost when it breaks down. It's full of nutrients and your grass is just like any other plants in your garden. So most plants you'll put compost in the soil to give them that boost of growth, give them some of those nutrients. You can do the exact same thing with your grass too. I opted to go with the large rake in the end because it seemed to actually rake around the compost a little bit more easily. And then I used the smaller rake just to get round the edges here because it was difficult with the big rake up against the brick wall. 
And the next thing we gotta do is water this in and keep the seeds moist whilst they germinate. So at the time of recording, it is the Easter weekend. So we've got one more day of nice sun and then we've got about a week of rain that's gonna be sort of on and off, which is gonna be perfect for this seed to germinate. But I am gonna give it a water now, considering tomorrow's quite a hot day. And then hopefully the rest of the week will take care of itself. Right, I hope you have found today's video useful. If you have, feel free to give it a like. And if you'd like to check out any of my other content, such as my garden renovation series or any of my recent launching videos, you can head over to my channel. And if you like what you see, you can feel free to subscribe. Finally, thanks for watching.